Morning. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Welcome, welcome. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, baby. Oh, look at that drop. That's going to be nice. <laughs> morning everyone yeah as you probably know Netflix I am in a position there still I've been in Netflix like every day for the last four days it's crazy I'm like in and out of this thing I should have just held it from my original entry but I do hold I do hold a swing trade from my original a small swing trade from my original entry but I've been sort of day trading it here and there as well but a nice drop right there under 285. All right. So, good morning, everyone. How we doing? Welcome back. Welcome back to the stream. Later, dude. What's up? How you doing, my friend? Morning, morning. We'll wait for uh, some people to stop in here. Just sort of hang out for a little bit. Hope everyone's having a good morning so far. Hope everyone woke up uh, feeling all right. Yesterday, interesting day, uh, definitely broke down those levels we talked about in the live stream, that bear flag we were talking about pre-market, worked out really nicely yesterday, uh, no signs of upside, no signs of strength, and just uh, really nice, uh, really nice continuation on the market. Now, <laughs> overnight was, was pretty crazy, overnight was pretty crazy. Um, I went and saw Avatar last night, and when I was in the theater 
watching Avatar, uh, I, I checked my phone and I saw the futures down like 1%. I was like, what the hell just happened? Uh, so that was very interesting. We saw that uh, Bank of Japan news come out. Um, you know, to be honest, guys, I'll, I'll always be honest with you. I still have some education to go through today for myself on this Bank of Japan news and uh, and how it affects the markets. Obviously, we can see the reaction to it was pretty negative, um, but uh, I still need to you know understand the inner workings of how that affects everything myself. Uh, a little bit more before I can speak on it. I would recommend watching Josh today. Uh, Josh, uh, Stock Market Live. He's very good with the economic side of things, with the inner workings of the, uh, you know, currency market and how that affects the overall market. So I'll definitely be getting a little education from him today, and uh, and I would I would recommend you do the same. Uh, today, you know, I'm I'm more of a technical trader. Obviously, I pay attention to these events and how they affect the market, but you know, I can't really speak on you know the inner workings of it as confidently as you know as I'd like to just come out here and talk about it and pretend like I know exactly how this is going to affect the market long term. So, I would say, yeah, shout out to the Colt on this one. I'll definitely pass over the baton to him on this type of uh, on this type of news. Um, I'll definitely be watching him, and uh, yeah. Josh is uh, the Stock Market Live, so I'll pull it up for you guys. He makes great videos. He's very good on the economic side. Uh, he's extremely intelligent on uh, how this stuff is effect affects the market. So this is him right here, Stock Market Live. He already has a live stream. That's, that usually starts at Market Open right around there. Bank of Japan shocks the world, so... I'm sure he'll make another video on it, but yeah, I would definitely uh, give him a watch for, you know, if you really want to understand the inner workings of what was announced yesterday from Bank of Japan and how it affects the market, okay? So just saying that, you know, being, clearing it up, making it very apparent, you know, I'm definitely more of a technical trader and I will be, you know, using, you know, I'll be watching the technicals here and know how to trade the technicals here, but uh, yeah, all right? So that's that. I mean, basically what it means in my eyes right now is that the market's very weak, right? You can clearly see the reaction to it, and uh, that's that's definitely something I'll be keeping an eye out for. All right, so today is the 20th. Welcome back, my friends. Uh, my, I'm, I'm getting, this is an exciting time of the year for me, so I'm, you know, waking up a little happier these days. Uh, almost Christmas time, birthday coming up, New Year's, so a lot of good stuff coming up. Hopefully you guys are excited for a new year. Uh, futures. Economic earnings calendar, if we go to the economic calendar, if you guys remember, pretty light economic calendar before uh, before uh, Thursday, Friday. But of course now I think the headlines are going to be all about this Bank of Japan news, so we have a little bit of a, a little bit of something that's stepping in there. Uh, today, building permits, housing starts, nothing crazy. Tomorrow, current, uh, current account deficit, consumer confidence index, e existing home sales, nothing crazy there either. Uh, and then on Thursday, which, uh, which is the big day, right? GDP, real gross domestic income, jobless claims. This is going to be where things start to get a, start to get sort of um, interesting here. Uh, and then Friday, we have the PCE price index, real disposal income, real consumer spending, five-year inflation expectations. Things get interesting again here on Friday. So not much uh, until Thursday, Friday. But now it seems like this uh, the Bank of Japan news is going to be the you know the main thing that everyone's going to be watching on the on the macro side of things. Okay, Tesla 150, very interesting. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but uh, it's just sitting there at that 150. It's going to be very intriguing to see what happens. We did see a little bit of a drop below that intraday yesterday, and a pretty nice continuation. So it seems like there is probably some trading opportunities around this level. Uh, just be very cautious uh, when. Uh, when Tesla's around these key levels, it definitely gets a little dangerous. This is why I stayed out of it yesterday. I really, I made like 30 bucks on a small Tesla trade that I, you know, just took it to see if I could catch a big move. It really didn't move much for me. Um, and I just sort of stayed away. I, I, I don't really want to trade Tesla around this 150. I think it's a very difficult level. 
I think there's going to be a lot of jumpiness around this level, hard to read, so I'm sort of staying away, but uh, there could definitely be some opportunity. We'll take a look at it again today. Apple broke that 134 level. This was a key, key hold on Apple. It broke. Uh, next level on Apple looks to be 130, 129. This is definitely influential for the market. Apple's a huge mar huge part of the market. If Apple flushes today, uh, then yeah, we're definitely going to be weak on the market for sure. Netflix, uh, I was <laughs> Netflix is making a huge move in the pre-market right now. I think there was some news that dropped. Uh, Netflix ad supported tier was the least popular plan in launch uh, in launch month. I think that is uh, that's not good, very good news for Netflix. That their new ad supported tier that they released is not very popular. I think there was a lot of hope that that ad supported tier would help Netflix, uh, you know, try to you know grind up some revenue. And it looks like it was the least popular plan that just dropped. That news just dropped at eight o'clock. So that is definitely causing some downside there. Well, look at that one. Uh, Baba 85. I would be watching Baba today. Uh, Asian markets are very weak. The the Nikkei is down two and a half percent. The Hang Seng is down one point three. Uh, so if we get continuation on those Asian markets, I would watch some of these Asian market stocks like Baba, like JD, all those ones that uh, you guys know uh, know and maybe some of you love. I personally don't, but uh, eighty five on Baba looks like an interesting level. TSM, I took my profits on a TSM trade yesterday. I held this from last week. If you guys are in the Discord, you know that. Uh, this was a gap fill play, and I will uh, I will show you guys this. Amazon, new 2022 lows. So Amazon dropped below the 2022 lows yesterday. This is pretty influential. I want to show you guys this one. And then finally, Microsoft 239 is a, is a level to watch out for, okay? Avatar, I loved it, man. I mean, I love Avatar. I'm just an Avatar fan. So you got to really like that kind of stuff. I mean, I like sci-fi a lot. I'm a big sci-fi fan. And, you know, Avatar is sort of sci-fi-ish, uh, but it is, you know, that kind of genre. So, uh, yeah, I, I love sci-fi. I love Avatar. I love everything about it. Awesome movie. I loved it. I, I know the numbers were a little bit lower than expected, I saw. I, I have a feeling it's just uh, that they waited too long. Uh, I think maybe there's, like, some younger people that just don't really know what it is, potentially. Like, you know, kids that are maybe, like, in their teens right now just don't really even know what Avatar is and have no interest in it. Uh, they're too busy, you know, playing Fortnite. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe they just waited too long. I don't know. Uh, but... If you uh, if you know Avatar, then you would love this movie, right? If you if you love the first one, then you would absolutely love this movie for sure. All right, so let's get started. Nasdaq. My microphone sounds not so good today. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Dima. Same thing I have every single day. I haven't changed a thing. I don't know. Is it the right one? Yep, it is. All right. So, <laughs> teens don't play Fortnite anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, NASDAQ, here we go. I'm sort of watching the NASDAQ on a shorter term today. Uh, that's sort of my plan today. This is the NASDAQ on the 15 or on the five minute. Uh, and I think the five minute, 15 minute, I think these are some of the more important levels uh, to be watching. Uh, for uh, the NASDAQ, for the ES, I think we need to keep an eye on the short-term trend a little bit more because uh, I'll go out to the longer-term trend, but the short-term trend, I think, is very important here. Here's why. Uh, so you guys can see here, this was yesterday's price action. We dropped, right? We dropped below. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit here, right? So you guys can see this is Friday's lows, right? Friday's lows. We dropped below it intraday. We turned it into a rejection point. We got a little bit above it, but I would call that a rejection there at Friday's low. So that was the first key yesterday. Made a new leg lower. Came back up, rejected this 230 area, made a new leg lower. Now you can see in the futures market, we pushed higher back into some of these rejection points intraday yesterday, and then that Bank of Japan news came out and just sort of shot this thing lower. We have grinded up a little bit in the pre-market today, not much, um, and we are still below that futures rejection point where that Bank of Japan news was released. So right here around 11, 230, I think that's a must-watch level, right? This is the same thing I said yesterday. If you are not above 11, 230, right, um, 
if you are not above 11,230, then you just can't look to be bullish, right? There's no, there's no way to be looking to be uh, on the bullish side, right? If you are, if you are below 11,230. Yeah, we'll look at Apple today, Sal. So. Um, so that's going to be my first watch, right? 11,230. If you are not above that, then no reasons to be bullish here. If you are rejecting this rejection point from the futures market last night, then how do you look for, uh, <clears throat> you know, how do you confidently look for upside here? That would be my first opinion here on the NASDAQ, right? So as long as I'm below, as long as I am below here, then I would be very more, I would be on the bearish side uh, looking for downside continuation or rejections. If you can break this level today, 11,230, then maybe you look to push back into the Friday's lows, 11,280, 11,300 area. If you get above that, then you're probably pushing back into this uh, 11,400 area. But that is hard to, that's hard to see today. So 11,230, 11,280, those are my first two levels in the short term to watch. I think as long as you're below this futures rejection point right here, then I would look for downside today. I would look for continuation. If I go out to the four-hour chart, um... When I look at this four-hour chart on the NASDAQ, I just don't really see any support here, guys, to be quite honest, until around 10.9. 10.9, 11,000, it just doesn't seem like this is an area where we're just going to randomly hold up at, right? When we look at a market like this, when we look at key, you know, key levels, previous structure points, previous demand, it seems like the real strong demand is going to come in around here, right? Around this 11,000, around this 10.9, around this 10.8. This 200-point range, all back here from October, you had support, 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 right? So if we're sort of trading in, a, in the middle of this straight-up move, right, my, my just experience from trading would tell me that we probably need to come down and retest this demand. At this point, I don't see why the buyers would step up in such a random area here. Uh, I think th you have buyers that are probably sitting down here, around this 10, 9, 11,000. I think you'll see buyers start to accumulate down at this level. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be much of a willingness to buy this market up in the middle of this chop, in the middle of this straight up move. Uh, I would expect, you know, I don't know the timing of it, but I would expect that the NASDAQ will come back down and retest this 10, 9 area. Back down at this support here, I think we'll come back down to that level at some point here in the near future. So that's my intuition right now. Uh, that's sort of what I am looking at. I am looking to see if the NASDAQ wants to come back down and retest this 10.9 area. Uh, that major support, if we go to the daily chart, right? Here's the daily chart. You can see right here, this daily chart here, this support down here around this 10.9, 10.7, 10.8, all in here. I would assume we come into that because if you look at the daily chart, you can see this was just a straight up move. Uh, this was CPI, I believe, the, the 10th of November. And we're just sort of trading in that. We're just sort of pulling back to come back down and retest this previous demand level. So that's what I'm looking at. I think ultimately you will see a move back down to that level. How we get there in what fashion, that's really the question. Um, you know, that's why I'm paying attention to these short-term levels. 10, 11, 230, 11, 280 today. <clears throat> ES. So ES, short-term. Here's what I'm watching. You guys can see right here. Pretty clean rejection uh, on the ES. You guys can see right here, previous lows on Friday, right? You had some rejections there intraday yesterday. You see right here, we had a little bit of potential support step in and then the flush late day. So you had support, you had attempt at support, you had a flush of support, you had a retest of the support, and you had a drop down below. So this on the ES is just absolutely textbook stuff. I mean, you had a previous support, we broke it, we retested it, and we rejected it, all right? There's just nothing quite as clean as that is exactly, I mean, that's exactly what we talk about here every day on the live stream. So break and retest, uh, love to see it, makes it very easy to understand, right? Makes the easy the market easy to read. As long as you are below this retest rejection level, you just can't be bullish, right? You just cannot be bullish if the ES is below 38.55, uh, it makes it very easy to read, right? Because you've seen the rejection. You saw it was, it was previous support. It was previous support. You saw the flush. You saw it try to come back into it and failed. And then if you try to come back into it again today, you know, I would be on the side of it failing because that's what it's done previously, right? So that's the level I'd watch. I'd be watching 3855 on the ES. 
If you do get above it, if you do turn it into support, then maybe there's a short-term move to the upside. Um, but, you know, that's something I'll have to I have to watch and see if I really do see that strength step in. Um, but 38.55 is, I think, the one and main level that I would be watching today on the ES, right? Um, right here, 38.55, okay? So watch that. Down below, it's a little bit interesting on the ES. Uh, it's a little bit interesting on the ES. It's, to me... If I was to be, you know, if I was to do the same analysis on the ES as the NASDAQ here, um, I think we need to come back down to this 3750, all right? You can see right here, we have a previous rejection point here. We have a previous rejection point here. We have a previous support level right here. <coughs> Excuse me. And finally, we have a previous support level right here at 3750. So... If we continue lower, right? If we continue to stair step to the downside, I think ultimately your get your uh, your target is right here at 3750. These previous lows, these previous rejections, this previous area of interest on the market, I'm thinking your next area to watch out for is around this 3750, right around here. Okay? So, 3750 on the ES is sort of that longer term, you know, watch to see if we do continue to the downside, that would be my target. Thank you, guys. Um, and then on the NASDAQ, it would be down at this 10.9, okay? 10.9, 37.50. Those are, you know, not today's targets, but overall, that's where I think the market needs to head back down to, okay? Dow Jones, Mike Jones, 15-minute uh, on the Dow. If we go ahead and take a look at this today. A little bit interesting on the Dow, a little bit of outperformance as, you know, as we've seen on the Dow, you know, this is Friday's lows. So you can see we're above that Friday's lows. As of right now, we're just rejecting this little futures market rejection point around this 33,050. So right here, you can see we rejected that 33,050 area, but we are above Friday's lows. So you can see right here, if we go to the ES, if we go to the ES, you are below Friday's lows. Right here, Friday's lows, rejecting it, rejecting it. So now if we go to the the Dow, uh, you can see we're, we're above that. So a little bit of outperformance again on the Dow, which is uh, I think in part probably due to Boeing. Uh, Boeing was a little bit strong yesterday. I think it, I think end of day it sort of helped, uh, helped the, the, uh, the Dow recover pretty nicely off some news. So I'm going to keep an eye on this one. Uh, but you can see the Dow, a little bit of outperformance. I would watch this 3350 area, 33,050. If that breaks out, then you could see more upside here. All right, if you get a break here, you could see more if you get upside today. Uh, if you do reject this level and continue lower, I would look to see, does support step in again at Friday's lows? If it does, then watch for support at this 32,850 area right here, all right? And uh, if you move lower below that, then you're going to get continuation, all right? So 33,050 on the Dow. Watch that double top. That's what I would be watching for. Um, moving averages. I'll go ahead and pop up the daily SMAs here, Chef. I think we're, we've broken a significant amount of them. Uh, so the Dow 50. Yeah, Dow 50 right here. Dow's holding the 50. You got the 200 down below on the Dow. On the ES, you're below them all. All right. You're below them all. You can see right here, 50, 100, 20, 200. The, 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 the ES is below every single moving average there. And then on the NASDAQ, you're below all of them as well. 50, 20, 100, 200, all the way up here. So the only one that's above a moving average is the Dow Jones, right? 50, 200, and 100. That's the one that's obviously been outperforming. Thanks, unknown. You want to look at Sox L? Yeah, I mean, we'll look at the semiconductors. All right, so that's that, guys. Uh, we'll go to the Russell here. Russell, below all the moving averages. I take them off because they're a little bit messy here. Try to clean up the chart. Um, yeah, Russell's pretty big breakdown here on the Russell. You guys can see right here. We broke this previous support around the 1750s, 1760s, right here. So you're below that 1760 area on the Russell, this previous low. I would look to see if this turns into a rejection. If this turns into a rejection on the Russell, 
around 1760, uh, then I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking next low, right? Next previous, the previous low here. Same thing as my ES and NQ. I don't see these markets holding up in these random areas, right? You can see right here. Uh, Miguel, I'm not going to answer where I live on, on the voice chat, on the live chat with 1,300 people in front of me. I don't know why you're asking me that. <laughs> Would you like my social security number and my birth certificate as well? And my address? Um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about where I live, unfortunately, online. If you figure that out, then you figure it out, but I'm not going to answer that. Um, 1760, rejection point, watch out for that. I don't see how the Russell sort of holds up in this chop fest, right? So if we get more downside, uh, then I'm assuming we try to test this 1660 area, right? Okay. That's the same exact thing as 1090, 10900, and, uh, and 3750, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Miguel, I'm sorry, man. I don't mean to be a, I don't mean to be a dick, but you, I'm sure you understand. I just, uh, it's probably in my best interest not to be talking about that stuff. All right. So, that's the futures. Tesla. Let's continue. Sorry, guys. I know I come across... I, I, sometimes I say things and I regret saying it in such a manner, so I don't mean to... Please don't take anything I say as uh, derogatory. But All right. 150. So this is going to be a very interesting area on Tesla. This is going to be a very interesting area on Tesla. 150. So yesterday, if we go to the one-minute chart, let's see how this thing reacted yesterday. So I didn't expect... Uh, I did not expect this, right? I didn't expect this flush here. So I think Matt, I think Matt actually caught this. If you guys watch Matt, uh, Matt Diamond, I think he caught this flush. So shout out to him. That was really nice. Um, very nice drop there on 150. I just didn't want to get involved because I felt like if I got involved in this, it would do this, right? So I was just a little nervous on Tesla yesterday. Not going to lie. Just being very cautious, uh, being aware of, you know, the potential scammy price action that could happen here. We did get a nice continuation move down on Tesla into the 145s, uh, you know, on sort of low volume. And then uh, you sort of had that push above 150. You got back below 150. Then you pushed back above, below, above. And then we just sort of flatlined until close. Yeah, I live in the Avatar. <laughs> That's where I live. I wish I lived in Avatar, man, in Pandora. Um, so for me today, guys, my best advice to you as if you are, you know, if you are, if you are managing my money, if you were managing my money, or if I was managing your money, or if someone's money was at risk that I cared about, uh, I would say stay far away from Tesla here in the short term. Um, I don't know what's going to happen at this level. There is so many, just so many orders stacked up, uh, you know, on Tesla around 150. Um, and I just don't really know which way he's going to win. I don't know which side's going to be stronger. I don't know what's, you know, dark pool orders come in. I don't know what Elon's doing. Uh, is Elon selling more? Is El is someone buying a bunch at 150? I have no idea, and I really just don't want to be too involved in it. So I would be careful around here. If it's very obvious that we reject 150, right? If it's a, if it's clear as day that we're just going to reject 150, and the price action seems pretty you know consistent, then maybe there's a trade here. Uh, but just be aware when stocks are at key levels like this, uh, they tend to get pretty scammy. And uh, on top of that, it's Tesla. On top of that, it's Tesla, which doesn't help it at all. So, And on top of that, they might even just trade this thing sideways at 150 again, right? If you were trading in this in the last hour of the market, you were probably, you know, banging the desk in frustration. So be careful there around this 150. Uh, it should be interesting, uh, but, you know, I, I think it's in our best interest to stay away until a really, really clean continuation move starts to set up. I think that's probably in our best interest. All right. Apple. So, very important flush yesterday on Apple. Very important drop here on Apple under this 134 level. We had this previous low on Apple right here. We had this previous double bottom low right here. And yesterday, we flushed it very cleanly, right? Look at that flush right below that level. No signs of support. Big four-hour candle right through that support. Just sort of piercing right through it. 
and a really weak continuation to the downside. Uh, so at this point, guys, I don't see the strength there on Apple. And at this point, I would assume that this is this has to retest this 129, 130 area. So I would absolutely be watching Apple today back into the 129 lows. That's right here. 129.04 is the exact low. You definitely need to watch 130, though, as a psychological level. So be careful of the 130s. Be careful of the one, uh, 129s. I'm actually going to put a line at 130 just for my own sake. And I'm going to put a little box between that $1 range. Uh, so right around in here, right? So 130 to 129, this is an area that I would be watching. If I go to the 5-minute chart, I think the best thing you could ask for today um, is a retest of one, 134. You know, I'm not sure we're going to actually get that. But a retest of 134, a rejection at it, right? Something like this. And then the move to 130, 129. That would be the best case scenario. Now, do we get a pop in the, mar in the morning up to 134? Uh, you know, maybe, yeah, very possible, right? I can't, I can't, you know, let me, let me reverse here. I can't be biased in thinking that this is just going to continue lower. I have to understand that there could be some morning fakes, some morning pops, some morning bull traps. If we do get a morning bull trap, uh, you know, up to the 134 area, then definitely watching that for a potential rejection back into the 130s. So Apple looks very weak here. Key flush under 134. Uh, I would be watching this. Uh, to see if it moves back into the 130s, 129s, okay? Pre-market is 4 a.m. Eastern to 9.30, yes. Great answer. Thank you, my friend. So, yeah, watching Apple there. All right, Netflix. So, I re-entered Netflix yesterday. Um, here's why. I also do have a swing trade that I still have since, I think it was last Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. I can go ahead and pull that up real quick, actually. Uh, 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 where is it? I'll find it here. I wish I could find it. All right, there's Cat. There's Home Depot. Cat. This is back on the 6th. I don't think I was in it back on the 6th. Oh, I think I have it in this one. That's why. Here we go. Yeah, right here. So on the 13th, um, took profits, moved a portion of profits into next week's 320. So I have these right here. Uh, December 23rd, 320 puts. I only have one of them. Um... And I have them for, uh, I don't have it in the screenshot, but I had them for, I think around, I don't want to say because I might be mistaken, but I do have these 320 puts uh, in my interactive brokers. I'm going to hold on to them. I just don't see a reason to sell, right? I don't see a reason to sell. And here's the, here's the reason. All right, here's, here's why I don't see a reason to sell, and I'll show you right now. Uh, so if I go to the 90-day, one-hour chart, uh, here's what I was looking at yesterday. Here's why I was uh, continuing to look for downside here uh, on, on Netflix. So we'll get to the housing data in a second here, guys. I'm not really too concerned about housing data at the moment. Um, here's why I continued to hold Netflix. So we had a big drop on Netflix, right? We already talked about the 330 rejection, and we had that very aggressive flush. This was on Thursday of last week, so very nice move there. Uh, next. Right, we got under this three or this two ninety five level. You see right here, previous rejection, previous rejection, two ninety five double top. We got below that level. Now, after getting below the two ninety five double top, what did Netflix do? Right, when Netflix dropped below two ninety five double top, we, if we go to the thirty minute chart, look at how clearly that two ninety five double top from previous turned into a rejection point. Look at these top tailing wicks. Look at the inability to get back above 295. So yesterday, right, into Monday morning, I took another trade on Netflix with a stop over 295. It's very easy, very defined, right? If we're if we're below a previous double top, if I'm going to see something like this on Friday of last week, if I'm going to look at the market uh, on, on Netflix and say, hey, look at how many times this rejected 295, I'm going to get in here with a stop over 295, and I'm going to look for the continuation move. Uh, really easy risk to reward, really easy, you know, trade setup, 295, previous double top, turning into a rejection point right here. 
And let me ride this thing out until it pops above 295, right? You can see right here, 295. And so now, right now, the big level is down here, 275. This was sort of my target, actually, on this trade. So I might have to even consider taking profits today uh, because really my target was 275. If we break 275, uh, then you have a lot of room here on Netflix. If you start to break down 275 today, if the market does continue to go weak, uh, and you break this 275 demand down here, you have a significant amount of space, right, down into this 250. So watch out for that. Uh, if we break this 275, guys, you might be retesting this previous high. This might be where, uh, this might be where Netflix has to come back down to, right? You see right here, you see right here. This might be the right move on Netflix. Back to here, then we find support at this level, right? So, I'm definitely keeping an eye on that 250 on Netflix. If uh, if we drop this 275, I will definitely attempt to hold some of these puts for potentially a 250 level. All right. Did we really get any type of movement off the housing data? And doesn't seem that way. Let me know if you see anything change here, guys. But as of right now, I don't really see much reaction. Just a bunch of chop up and down. All right. Baba. All right, Baba's actually starting to slip a little bit here. So you guys can see here, right? Baba's starting to slip. The uh, If you can see in the top left of your chart, I know it's probably pretty small, but the Nikkei is down 2.5. The Hang Seng's down 1.3. So the Asian markets are very weak here this morning. Now, that should affect Baba. And Baba is at a pretty damn important level here. Uh, so... You have a previous high here around 85. You have a previous rejection around here at 85 as well. You have a previous level that turned from a rejection into a support right here at 85. Now, we're trading above 85. You either see support step in at 85, but in my opinion, with what I'm seeing on the market right now and what I see on the Asian market overnight and the Bank of Japan news, I have a hard time believing that BABA is going to hold 85. Now, I'm not going to you know, buy puts, you know, and just hope that it breaks it, I will definitely wait to see some type of confirmation. But if you break 85 here on BABA, you know, you definitely could see, uh, you could definitely see some downside here, right? There's not much support down below this 85. This was the key level. You had a previous rejection that, that rejected once again, that turned into support right here. If you break this, right, that should cause a reaction to the downside uh, and you know, it's a little bit hard to tough wear, but there is not much support down here. If you look at these gaps, right, I would say probably 81s, 80, 81, right in this general area here. You bring that back to back at these previous rejection points. I would say right around this 80, 81 area would be your next support, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye on Baba under 85 today. Uh, very weak here in the pre-market. Obviously the mark, the news out of Japan is bearish for Baba as well. And, uh, I would keep an eye on that. Uh, today 85 on baba tsm so tsm if you guys remember we've been watching this thing for the gap fill and it finally worked out so congratulations to you guys that caught this we traded this gap fill in the chat uh took some puts here after a 78 rejection that was the key i think this was back on friday yeah we took them friday this was where we did it right we took them friday and this is the, this was the confirmation for the entry right here right we talked about it on Friday in the live stream. We said if it rejects 78, look for that downside continuation. This was pretty much the perfect rejection point you could possibly see. Uh, you can see right here, rejection at that 78. Watch out for that. You can see the 78 push. We rejected it. We moved to the downside, right? We uh, I held these overnight. Uh, uh, uh. Right here, I took some TSM December 23rd, 78 puts. Here's why, right? The 78 rejection that we saw last Friday, right there. Uh, and just sort of held those until yesterday. And you can see we really did, we filled that gap pretty nicely. It was a little bit of a slow move yesterday, but we ended up getting that move. So today, if you are in TSM puts, I would watch out for support around 74.6. That would be where I'd watch. This could be a potential support level on, uh, on TSM. So watch out for that 74.6 here, all right? That's what I would watch out for. That could be support today. If you drop that, you got another gap here until like 70. But watch out for that 74.6.
Amazon. Amazon. So, Amazon made new yearly lows yesterday. Would you believe it? Uh, so, Amazon is just a really, really beat down stock. Uh, Amazon new 2022 lows here. If we go to the four hour chart, this is what I would be watching for today. I would look for a reject, a rejection of the previous lows. If you get a rejection of the previous lows here, I would definitely look for that downside uh, right here. So you have previous lows in this area right here, right? Uh, the exact low of this candle is 85.87. So we'll put a little line there at 85.87. That's the exact low, 85.87. I would also watch 86, the whole number, 86. But 85.87 was the exact low. If you push into that today, <laughs> look at what it did here. I can't make this up. I can't make this up. Look at this push intraday yesterday on Amazon right there. Where did that push into? Amazon flushed the previous low right here, previous 2022 low. It pushed back into it, rejected it absolutely perfectly. I mean, what was the high of this candle? 85.87. It tapped it to the cent. Uh, and then a major rejection right at that tap of the 2022 lows. So that's a break and retest on the intraday. That right there in itself is a sexy trade. Uh, probably, you know, definitely a nice percentage point trade right there. Taking puts off the rejection of the previous lows. Today, I would look for the same thing, right? If you push higher into uh, 85, 87, if you start to reject this level, right, I would look for the downside, right? So you can clearly see 85, 87, that's 2022 previous lows. You broke below them, you made new lows. Now I would look to see, does this area turn into a rejection point? If it does, then I would look for the downside, okay? It's easy as that. If not, then don't touch it. Microsoft, pretty important level here on Microsoft as well. We have a lot of important levels to be watching here today. Here's Microsoft. So Microsoft flushed this previous low, 243, 244. We were talking about this one. We flushed it straight down pretty much all day yesterday, very aggressive. We came right back down into this previous demand here, 239. So 239 support, support, and we're sitting at it again. If Microsoft flushes 239, look to the left of this chart, right? There's really nothing here. If if Microsoft, did I say Microsoft? If Microsoft drops 239, there is nothing here, in my opinion, that's going to hold this, this stock higher. I would say you probably trade back to around this 230, 231, 232. So right here, you guys can see, look at this gap. Look at this price action right here. This is nothing that's going to hold a market higher. So I will definitely be watching to see if Microsoft drops 239. As of right now, it is holding it as support. You can see the support that it's been trying to hold. You can see yesterday. Look at the support here. Look at the support here. And look at the support in the pre-market. So I wouldn't just buy puts on Microsoft. You know, this could definitely be an area where Microsoft pushes to the upside off of. Uh, so be careful on that. But I would wait to see if it really does confirm a downside move. Meta, I want to go over Meta real quick. This is very similar. You guys can see right here. Here's Meta, four-hour chart. You can see the previous support around that 113. This was the level we were talking about yesterday, saying wait to see if Meta can drop 113. As of right now, it's still holding. You can see right here, previous highs into a demand, right? Pre into support there, into support there, and into support again in the pre-market today. So I think Meta, you need to wait for a 113 break and retest for more downside or... You know, or if you think the market is due for a little bit of an upside move, then maybe you try to buy it off 113 today, right? So watch out for that. All right, guys, 113. Um, AMD 65, that's what I would watch. Watch for the 65 rejection. You can see right here, previous rejection at 65. I would go to the 15 minute. Look at that short-term analysis on AMD. I want you guys to start to see, I mean, we look at the same thing every single day, guys. You have to start, there's got to be a time where you're like, oh, look, that's exactly what we look at. Look, AMD, what would what would I say here? All right, what, what would I say here on AMD? You should already know what I say here on AMD. It's pretty obvious. So that's what I would watch. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. You should know exactly what I'm looking at here. Previous lows into rejection. Trade or o Ogren, you gotta 
It's the same thing as we always look at. Same thing as we always, always look at. Previous lows into rejection. Break and retest. Happens all the time. Right? Look at it here. Break and retest. Right here. <laughs> break, retest the previous lows, reject it. Break the previous lows, reject it. Break the previous lows, reject it. Right? How many more times are we going to do that? That's what I would be watching. All right. So let's, uh, let's pop into the uh, ticker form and see what you guys got for us today. Nike, Abvi, Disney, MRNA, Lucid, MRK. All right. Let's go quick. We got to go speed around. If you guys could take one second, press the like button. That would be much appreciated if you're here every day which I know a lot of you are, uh, if you could just take a second, press the like button, uh, that would be awesome. All right. Nike. You guys can see right here. Nike. I think that 105 level was pretty key. Uh, 104, 105. But you can also say that these lows right here around uh, 102.92. 102.92. I would watch out for this 102.92 area. But we are below that right now. So if we start dropping this 102.90, 103 area on Nike, I mean, this looks pretty weak to me, guys. Uh, it, it's looking pretty weak. Look at this uh, Look at this little shelf. Yeah, I like this. What's this low? 102.92? Yeah, I would watch Nike under 102.92 here. If you start slipping that, I mean, look to the left. There's nothing there. So yeah, 102.92, that's what I would look for on Nike. AbbVie Healthcare. Uh, still sort of holding up here. Um, I don't know what your plan is on Abby. If you guys want like a more in-depth, you know, analysis, whatever you're putting in here, you got to give me a little bit of insight into what you're looking at. Um, uh, so Abby, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle of nowhere. I would say you got to wait for at least a pullback to 154. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> I appreciate that, Jay. Um, so previous rejection, previous rejection, one fifty four. Nike has earnings. Oh, great. Well, then forget it. Disney, look at that. Oh, Disney, look at that break on Disney, guys. Big break. That's set a twenty twenty two low. Yeah, twenty twenty two lows on Disney. That's a big break right there. So watch out for that. Uh, this has this could have some continuation. We're holy crap, man. We're we're getting close to that COVID low. $80 COVID low. I mean, we we might be able to get to that. 79 is COVID lows. Look at that flush on the weekly chart right there. So, yeah, I would watch out for that. Disney for continuation. Watch for it to reject the previous low. MRNA. I think MRNA is a disaster. I hate trading it. Uh, it's starting to reject this little pop that it had. I don't like trading biotechs, guys. Uh, I think it's just a disaster. I, I think it's a it's not easy to trade. I would just watch for this retest level, right? If you need if you need to trade mRNA, uh, I would watch for this retest level. 188. That could hold a support. I'm not going over Lucid. Please stop trading Lucid. Uh, MRK, yeah, it's not breaking, like you said. Um, support, support, support. Guys, I don't know why everyone keeps feeling the need to type in caps. If you type in caps, I just let you know, I instantly don't look at your comment. I just want to let you know. This is what's going on in my head. If you type in caps, there's a lower chance that I will talk about what you're what you're putting in the in the chat. It's obnoxious and it's ridiculous. It's just not necessary. So please don't do not type in all caps. All right, MRK not breaking. Yeah, it's just holding 108. Healthcare is strong, man. Healthcare is just too strong. Cat. Yeah, I like, I'm going to look at Cat. I'm still in my Cat trade. Cat's just channeling. It's it's channeling, guys. It's doing nothing. You either need a break at 225 or a break at 240. But Cat is just stuck in a channel right now, just to let you know. It's not going to do... It's Until it breaks that channel, it's just going to continue to go up and down. Um, What else? NVIDIA. We didn't go over NVIDIA. I'll go over NVIDIA real quick. I think NVIDIA is in... Uh, I think NVIDIA is in, um, in no man's land. Right here, you guys can see right here. We have this uptrend on NVIDIA, four-hour uptrend. 
You did break below that four hour uptrend. I think Nvidia has to come back down to this 155. I don't see where Nvidia would hold up before 155 here. It just doesn't make much sense. We already went over Apple. You can see right here, support, support. Uh, I'm in a good mood actually, but the chat's been a little bit obnoxious today. I'm seeing a lot of all caps, a lot of crazy comments. You know, I just, <laughs> uh, support, support, 155, uh, like boil. What is boil? If this is under $10, okay, I take it back. <laughs> boil, ultra Bloomberg ETF. What the hell is this? Uh, 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 okay, natural gas. The only thing I have for you on natural gas is uh, watch out for the freeze that's coming through on next week. That's what I would watch for on, on natural gas. Uh, anyways, NVIDIA, 155. I think you got to come back down to that. I think you got to come back down to uh, 155 on NVIDIA. I don't see how this holds up before that. Um, I would say watch out. This is something I brought up to my chat yesterday. Next week, you're having some extreme cold weather across the United States. Um and watch out to see what happens if there's any type of freezes on uh, any type of freezes on natural gas or anything like that. Keep an eye on that. All right. All right, guys. I think that's about it. Nasdaq still under that low. ES still under that low. That's what I would be watching today, right here. This is the biggest thing. What's that level on SPY? On SPY, that is, right? So guys, remember, like when I say watch for the, you know, the Friday's lows on the ES, then all you have to go to is go to the SPY, right? And go to Friday's lows. That's it. Friday's lows, right here, right here right here 381 on the spy Soxel, yeah i told you i'd do it so let's go over it real quick yeah that's a big break on Soxel, huh look at that look at that break look at that break on Soxel. so yeah big break of 11 on on the soxl yeah i would look for continuation there for sure that's a big break i would say probably here Right, and that would bring NVIDIA down 9.6, and that would bring NVIDIA back down to probably around that 155. So that makes sense to me. All right, guys, that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. Sorry for uh, some of the comments today that I've made, but, uh, you know, hey, that's why I'm here. That's who I am. So I hope you enjoy it. If you don't, you don't have to be here. But I hope you do enjoy it. If you do, if you like the charts with a side of banter, then welcome to the chat. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Have a fantastic day. Um, what else? What else? What else? I think that's it. Make sure to read up on that uh, Bank of Japan stuff. I think that's very important. I think it's important to pay attention to what's going on with that. You know, check out some, you know, check out Josh. Shout out to the cult. Maybe, you know, do some research online. Make sure you understand what's going on there. I'm definitely going to be. Uh, to get an idea of exactly how I expect this to react to the uh, the market to react to this, uh, so I would do the same. Okay. Thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Press the like button. Uh, <laughs> all caps. Everyone write in all caps. Everyone now. Now's your time. All caps. Go 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 go. <laughs> all right. Thanks again, guys. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace out. Thank you.